But if I'd understood this earlier, I could have saved myself so much pain and hassle. <laughs> oh, so much time. Hello, my loves. Welcome back to my channel or welcome if you're new here. My name is Lorena. I'm a somatic self-concept and manifestation coach and I support women to shift their identity, step into a new self-concept, embody a new state of being sustainably so that you can align with anything you desire in life and make it manifest in your physical reality. We're essentially bridging the gap between who you currently are and who you desire to be or become. If you like this type of content, then please subscribe to my channel and click the notifications bell so you don't miss any future uploads. If you like this particular video, which is one I'm really excited about, then please also leave a like. And I also invite you to check out the links in the description box below because you will find a bunch of free resources there to dive into, whether you are new on your manifestation journey and trying to change your self-concept or whether you've been at it for a while and looking for a different approach, a different way, then you can dive into all of the resources down below. And if you wanna take it even deeper and you wanna be coached by me, you wanna work with me, you wanna join my coaching program, then you can find information for that in the description box below as well. Today we're talking about all the lessons that I had to learn the hard way on my manifestation journey and I'll bring them all to you so that you don't have to learn it the hard way so that you can learn from me and my own mistakes. So I've probably tried everything that you have tried as well or that you are currently trying. I have been on my own journey of shifting my identity and manifesting a reality beyond my wildest dreams for a long time and some things have been very successful, some things have not been very successful. I have become a completely different version of myself multiple multiple times but I also made many mistakes on the way and I want to share them with you today because a lot of these mistakes are mistakes that I still see being promoted in the manifestation community online. I speak to a lot of people day in day out who feel stuck on their journey, who feel like they can manifest small things here and there but that the bigger things that they truly desire either aren't coming in or that they can't sustain them, they can't maintain these manifestations manifestations when they do arrive and a big reason for these experiences are the reasons I will share with you today. So let's go. Lesson number one, thoughts do not create your reality. Basically telling yourself that something is true does not make it true. There is this misconception in the manifestation community that thoughts create your reality and this is radically oversimplified. The idea of this message is that your beliefs create your reality and your beliefs are comprised of thoughts. You first have a thought before you have a belief. So if you think something often enough, it turns into a belief. And therefore, if you start thinking new thoughts and you repeat them often enough, then your beliefs will change automatically as well. That is the premise. That is the idea that is promoted. And that is wrong. The main issue with this is that thoughts are only part of the equation. What really manifests your reality, whether it's consciously or unconsciously, you're always manifesting your reality, is your state of being and the identity that you operate from, how you see and perceive yourself and how you show up in the world. And that is not just about the way you think. Just like your beliefs aren't just thoughts, your beliefs are a bit more complex than just thoughts because they are so deeply ingrained in your system that there is often a memory in your nervous system of something that isn't connected to thought, it's more connected to feeling or sensation. Also, when you change your thoughts, you're only changing what you're consciously aware of and this will eventually burn you out. And this is where I'm really, I'm speaking with all of this from experience, but this is really what happened to me. I was fighting against myself and my circumstances and my reality and my perception and my beliefs so much because I was trying to convince myself of beliefs that I didn't truly feel to be true. 
I got so burnt out from trying to change my thoughts that I ended up feeling worse rather than better, which is not the intention. And this is something that I hear from a lot of clients as well. A lot of my clients come to me when they have been feeling frustrated with the traditional manifestation techniques and messages because it ultimately really exhausts you if you constantly try to manage your mind. Changing your thoughts does not change your state of being. It only changes your state of mind. And even that is often temporary because you live in a body. You are not just the mind. You are not just your ego. And so you can't get rid of your body in this lifetime. Number two, big, big lesson, self-concept is key. How you feel about yourself, who you see yourself to be, how you perceive yourself, the energy you carry yourself with, all of that really has the biggest impact on your external reality. You can work on your beliefs about others and about the world, you can work on your thoughts and you can work on your mindset, but if you don't feel yourself to be the person for whom the reality you envision for yourself is natural and normal, then there will continue to be parts of you that repel the very thing that you desire. And it's great that many people are starting to realize that your self-concept is important, the self-identity that you have is super important, how you see yourself is super important. But when I come across messages online or my clients tell me what they have learned from maybe other coaches or teachers, then I see that the way people are taught to change their self-concept and even what they're taught it is, is quite limited. And a lot of people don't really know what it means. And I feel like maybe I should make an updated video on this. I have a video on how to change your self-concept, but I made this right in the beginning of when I started this channel. And my knowledge and my experience has developed so much since then that I feel like it deserves an update and an upgrade. So let me know if you're interested in a new video about this topic. But the way many people try to change their self-concept is therefore laced with limitations and very much surface level approaches. But self-concept is key. Self-concept is key above anything else, above visualizing your ideal reality, above having the right thoughts. It's much more important than any of these things. Big lesson. Now, I had to learn that the hard way too, because in the beginning of my journey, I neglected my self-concept and I neglected myself as a whole because I was looking for results externally. And this is why I'm now so passionate about focusing primarily on your self-concept, on your identity, and just seeing the manifestation as a natural side effect, because it truly is. Number three, manifestation is not about controlling your reality. <laughs> Look, I started my manifestation journey because I was not happy with my reality, full stop. And I think that's how many people get into it. Some people maybe get into it through curiosity, but a lot of people get into it because there is something in their circumstances that they really dislike or something that they've desired for a really long time that they just can't seem to make happen. So when I started my spiritual journey and I realized I got these little nudges of this is not all there is and how I feel about myself and how I see certain things and the attitude that I bring into the world really impacts my experience. And if I don't believe something is possible, then it will not be possible. When I realized that how I saw the world and how I saw other people was directly mirrored back to me, I got pretty excited at the prospect of being able to change that because I recognized that I had the power to change that. But my ego, of course, turned this into trying to control my reality. And manifestation really is not about control. When you come at this from the perspective of control or trying to control, you will constantly try to manifest from your ego. And it happens really easily because we can't get rid of our ego and we shouldn't want to. Our egos are not bad. But when you operate from your ego, you will continue to see yourself in separation from the world. It's a losing battle. There will always be new things that you would rather change. And you will absolutely burn yourself out and make yourself more unhappy by only focusing on the outside. Number four, lesson number four, 
you cannot ignore your past and you cannot ignore your trauma. There is a whole school of thought that's like, you don't need to heal your trauma to manifest what you want. And I do have a video about this because there is truth to it. You don't, you can manifest things without healing every aspect of yourself, of course. You don't need to be fully healed to manifest what you want. But I do disagree in some aspects because healing trauma is actually the biggest part of a manifestation process. And when I talk about this, I'm talking about the bigger, bigger, more emotionally charged manifestations or desires that you may have. Because it's the unhealed parts of yourself that are continuing to block you from manifesting what you want. And for me, this was the biggest wake up call when I manifested a specific person a few years ago. And it worked, it worked. I just did the normal techniques of visualizing and imagining and meditating on the desire and it worked it came in but it didn't come in the way I wanted it to it didn't last and that was because I hadn't healed all my wounding the desire didn't even come from the right place because I came at this from an unhealed place where I was constantly responding to the trauma I hadn't healed. I was constantly operating from a wounded place and it was a vicious cycle. You can do all of the right techniques if you have wounded parts in yourself that you're still consciously or subconsciously operating from, you will keep yourself going in circles. Now, unhealed, unhealed parts of yourself doesn't mean that there is anything wrong with you. It's not something bad. It doesn't mean that you need to be fixed. There is a really big difference between fixing and healing. Healing leads to a sense of wholeness. It leads to progress. Trying to fix just keeps you in the feeling that there's something wrong with you, which there isn't. We are all perfectly imperfect. Having a past and having made traumatic experiences is not a problem. But when you neglect or deny your past or the pain that you may still carry, you're going to create a lot of resistance in your system because deep down you know that it happened and your nervous system and your reactions to certain triggers are going to show it to you regardless of how much you tell yourself otherwise. Number five, mindset is only part of the equation, which I touched on a little bit with the first point that thoughts do not create your reality. But if I would understood this earlier, I could have saved myself so much pain and hassle. <laughs> oh, so much time. Listen, I'm not saying that mindset is not important. It is. Of course, mindset is important. We need to work on our beliefs and our attitudes and notice how we talk about things and how we think about things and about ourselves. But it's really such a small part of the equation. Don't forget about the body. <laughs> Don't forget about your body. As I said before, what manifests your reality is your entire state of being and that includes the state of your body. That means the state of your nervous system. For example, are you often dysregulated? And honestly, most people are. When I woke up to this, when I woke up to how dysregulated I actually felt most of the time, it, it was mind-blowing because most people are really dysregulated all of the time, but they don't notice it because it's their status quo. It feels so normal to them. And I actually recently had a client who said this to me, like she didn't realize how dysregulated and how disembodied she'd actually been before she started doing this work with me. She thought she was regulated. She thought she was embodied. She had done somatic work before even, and still, she woke up to so much fear in her system when we began working together because it's so subtle and when something becomes normal to you and becomes natural to you then you don't even feel and you don't even know that there is a better way. It also refers to the emotional charges that live in your body because emotions they manifest as sensations in your body. Emotions turn into physical sensations in your body. So your emotions are directly connected to the state of your body too. So if you're not yet ready to move through the whole process and do the deeper work, 
like the work that I do with my clients, then as a little tip for you just now, instead of trying to force yourself to feel differently in your state of being through changing your mindset or changing your thoughts or changing your perspective, start by changing the state of your body. It will make changing your perspectives and integrating new beliefs so much easier. Number six, self-love really does matter. Self-love is such a buzzword and I'm not going to go into all of that now because that is also sorely misunderstood, but the most important ingredient on your manifestation journey is self-compassion. Now, there is a lot that goes into this. In my coaching program, we have a whole phase dedicated to creating an embodied sense of self-love and using that to manifest more successfully. So I'm not going to go into that too in depth, but manifestation is hard. At least if you want to manifest bigger things into your life or things that have a stronger emotional charge attached to them, it's not easy. You're going to come up against all your insecurities. You're going to be challenged. You're going to be met with obstacles. You're going to try and take responsibility for what you have created up until now and you will notice that you are beginning to blame yourself whether you want it or not. So if you only do one thing and you only take one thing away from this, then let it be to be more compassionate with yourself. It's the first thing or one of the first things that I emphasize for my clients because it makes every other step of the process so much easier because it's not an easy path. It's not an easy journey. Number seven, you don't have to do it alone. You don't have to do it alone. Ooh, this lesson took me so long to learn. I used to have a really hard time, and I still sometimes do, opening up to people. I used to have a really hard time asking for help, asking for support, feeling like a burden or feeling like a failure if I was doing this. That's just my personal experience, of course. But my ego was basically so big, I thought I had to do it all myself. And I think the idea of manifestation just amplified that and made it more intense because I was like, okay, I created this, right? Like I create my reality, so I have the power to change it. So what does another person do here? (laughs) This is all me. So I did not even consider getting help until I got pretty desperate. And then I started hiring coaches here and there for like one-off sessions. But what that would do is it would make me feel good for this one session. It would make me feel empowered and positive and optimistic after this one session. And then I would never get to the root of the issue. But you don't have to do it alone. There are so many communities online. Now I'm in a completely different space. Now I have mentors all the time because I can really notice how much it changed my life. If you have the right people around you and you have the right support that that is, you know, skilled people who really know what they're doing and who completely align with what you are looking to achieve or create or manifest or who you are looking to become. And it's so important because you really, you're really you not alone in this. You do not have to do this alone. There's so many communities as well. Like this is why I created this channel partly because I wanted to create some more community around this. And it's also just a lot harder to do it all by yourself. It takes a lot longer and you come up against places in your psyche and in your emotions that are so hard to sit with and be with as it is like don't make it harder for yourself by trying to struggle through it on your own i wouldn't be where i am without my amazing mentors and coaches and i know my clients feel the same way about having hired me number eight is that an eight yeah (laughs) you cannot trick your subconscious your subconscious is incredibly intelligent it knows when you're lying to yourself And when you lie to yourself, it only creates more resistance. What happens when you say affirmations to yourself that you don't truly believe to be true? When you look into the mirror and you tell yourself, I am in a loving relationship. I live in Hawaii, (laughs) just making things up. But you don't truly believe it. And you know it's not true. And your reality constantly confronts you with the opposite. Maybe you've just been broken up with, you've just been rejected, or you feel really trapped where you live. 
Obviously, that's all possible to change. Otherwise, I wouldn't be here sitting here with you and telling you that it's all possible. Otherwise, I haven't wouldn't have created the life that I've created because that didn't seem possible at some point. But when you're trying to push beliefs into your psyche that actually don't feel true to you, it creates resistance. When you tell yourself affirmations that you fully don't believe with the intention of making yourself believe this, what happens is that the part of your consciousness that believes the opposite will start speaking up and defend its beliefs. So now you are affirming one thing, but you are actually getting more embodied in the opposite belief. So you can't lie to yourself, it doesn't work. Number nine, your external circumstances are not what influences your feelings or what makes you not happy. And changing them will not make you happier. Manifestation is so fun. It can be so fun. Took me a long time to actually really feel it to be fully fun. But to bring this full circle, your self-concept is not only key because it ultimately impacts the reality that you manifest. It's also key because your reality is really not that important. Of course, having a loving relationship and having amazing friendships and community and living in a place that is fun for you... That's amazing. It's great. It's not only great, it also makes many things easier. When you manifest a loving relationship that you desire, of course, other things will get easier too, because suddenly you will have someone who can support you. You will have somebody to spend time with. You have have companionship. You have commitment, dedication. You have all of these things that you don't necessarily have when you're single. Of course, you're going to feel better because you're supported instead of being alone if a relationship is something that you desire, of course. Some people don't. But you can also manifest all of these things and still feel unlovable, still feel unhappy, still feel like you're stuck or trapped, even when externally you're not. And this is a really key lesson to learn because the primary thing that you truly want to change is not the way things are, but more so the way that you feel within yourself, about yourself, and in your state of being. Your external circumstances alone don't change the way you feel. You get to change the way you feel. Let me know which one of these nine points resonated the most with you or landed the most with you. Leave me a comment and I hope you enjoyed this and I'll see you in the next video.